All right, we are going to have another fun cooking experience. And I am like the Rachel Ray, but fast, furious, and super healthy. Today, I am teaching you guys how to prepare bowls. And I'm showing you, we're going to discuss all three bowls. And I am personally going to prepare a pokey bowl. So today, we're going to do pokey taco and Mediterranean. And it doesn't matter what type of food you like to eat, if you like uh, plant-based or you like vegan or you like, you know, pescatarian or you like uh, poultry and, and meat. Whatever you like is where you're going to replace it. So what you got was a guideline from me on how to prepare each type of bowl. And in that, um, I kind of broke it down because I really want you to learn how to food combine. This cooking class isn't just about like, oh, let's see how Becca slices and dices. It's about how to food combine so that your body, A, breaks down the food properly, that you don't go into a sugar fast where your insulin levels are, are busting with a roller coaster. A lot of people think, oh, I can't have carbs. Let me tell you something that is far from the truth. What you do need to do is eat carbs in the right quantity at the right time with the right food combination. If you follow protein, fat, and fiber, then you are going to be awesome. You're not going to have to worry about feeling sluggish in the middle of the day. How many of you feel sluggish half hour to 45 minutes after you eat and it lasts for about an hour, hour and a half and you kind of just want to like go to sleep. All right. I was there, been there, done that. I talk from first person as well as hundreds of clients who have come to me who want to learn how to eat right. So I want to take the time here just to like break this down for you a little bit. Um, first of all, a protein generally we think about it as animal. We think about uh, protein as an animal meat. But if you look at the guideline that I gave you, I showed you also a whole list of plant-based proteins as well as from the vegan. Oh my gosh, can I tell you how many moms call me? My daughter's going vegan, Becca. I'm afraid she's not gonna get enough protein. Oh, what should I do? So this gave you, this chart gave you a breakdown, a visual breakdown of your high quality, high quantity um, proteins for the vegans. So if you look at it, you'll see that peas, even peas have protein in them. It's the lowest source of protein, whereas your highest is a soybean. Now we're gonna talk about choosing soybeans. We're gonna be talking about how to choose high quality plant-based as well. Um, so first of all, as we're talking about that right here, I want to uh, share with you when you are choosing plant-based, if you can find a sprouted version, go for it. Because the sprouted version, what they do is it's almost like it's a seedling. It is a seedling, right? And it is um, more bioavailable. The nutrients are highest and most densest. Let's see. So I can show you some examples of sprouted that I bought. Now, sometimes your recipes are going to call for lentils. So your darker, that's your darker grains, whether it's your reds, your blacks, your greens, they're going to have more micronutrients. That's what your body needs. Um, let's say your vitamins, right? They're going to have more of your vitamins and your minerals than the wider blander. It, I think we talk about it, right? We want to get rid of our crap and that's the carbonated, artificial, refined and processed. Now, if you go into nature and you get white quinoa, right? I guess you can't see everything because of this be beautiful glare but white quinoa. This is all that Trader Joe's had, so I bought it. But in my pan is also cooking. I mixed it with whatever leftover red quinoa I had. I had some um, dark brown quinoa. So I mixed it all together. 
So here I am now sharing with you lentils. A lot of recipes may call for a French green lentil. The reason that they're going to ask for a French green lentil is because it's a little bit denser. It's not going to break apart as easily as one of your other uh, lentils. But if you get a sprouted, a sprouted lentil, it is going to be a little bit harder on the shell as well. And like we just said, a little more micronutrient dense. So if you had the choice between a French green lentil and you could find a sprouted green lentil, I would go with the sprouted version all the time, okay? So I wanna just kind of show you some of the grains as well. Um, well, you know what, let me skip back. <laughs> Squirrel, let's go back to the proteins. So I'm gonna list off some of these proteins for you that are super awesome. You should have them in your home. If you are converting to a plant-based kitchen, you want soybeans, you want organic, right? You want organic and unrefined. You don't want the ones, that they will say organic. If they are not organic, um, don't buy them. They have been uh, GMO'd and they also wanna say GM, non-GMO'd, okay? So, Soy in particular, if it has been GMO'd or anything has been GMO'd, let's go back to that. If it's been GMO'd, genetically modified, that means that they may take two different types and put them together. They may take uh, soy with, I'm just going to make this up, apples <laughs> and put them together because what they're hoping for is to make a stronger crop so that they don't have insects. Well, if it's GMO, the body doesn't know how to break down a GMO product. If the body doesn't break it down, guess what happens? A couple things happen. A, you get bloated, you get gassy, it gets frustrated, it can turn into years and years and years where then it breaks cellular tissue, you can have inflammation, IBS, yada, 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 constipation, right? So we want to be careful that when we are buying vegetables, we want to get the vegetables that are organic. So while we're talking about that, let's talk real quickly about how to know if it is organic or not. So if you guys can see this, uh, maybe not, I can read it to you. There is a nine, there's a nine. The first digit is a nine. If it's organic, the first digit in your fruits and vegetables will be a nine in the produce department. If it's conventional, AKA sprayed to the hell <laughs> with pesticides and herbicides and, and um, all those bad chemicals, it's gonna have a four. So we want to have as little fours as possible. Now, if it's GMO'd, it's going to have an eight. It's going to start with a number eight. I can tell you something. Papayas, for the most part, are all GMO'd. I was eating papayas like no tomorrow because it's really good for your gut. It really soothes it, it calms it, it's awesome. If you ever have indigestion, papaya is a great uh, fruit to have. I have papaya tabs, organic ones, in my home. I do not have any of those lactate type of um, products. I try to not eat what my body doesn't like. So if you have to have like lactate free milk, maybe don't have milk, <laughs> right? Maybe find an alternative that actually works for your body, not that's been so consumed and processed so that it works for your body. We don't wanna eat and then take something so that our bellies feel better. We, we don't want to, if our bodies don't like spicy, don't eat spicy. If your body doesn't like milk, <clears throat> nobody's body likes milk. <laughs> don't eat milk. But here I'm going to tell you, I'll, I'll, sound, I'll, I'll sound a little, uh, a little uh, counterintuitive. Every now and then I crave cottage cheese. Every now and then I crave Greek yogurt. Now I have all kinds of yogurt in my refrigerator right now. I don't have a Greek but if I do buy it, I buy one that says it's non-BHT. I buy one that says that is uh, organic. 
that the cows have not been um, processed. The cows haven't been processed. The cows have not been um, cursed that they are uh, free range cows, that they graze on natural food, that they're not given food that isn't a healthy source. Because if you do like to eat animal proteins or byproducts of animals, I want you to consider organic. Now, I know that sounds a little bit ridiculous on the price and whatnot, but if it's not organic, not only has it not been, has it been given shots and antibiotics and things that break down our bodies, but it's all, its source of food is also crappy. Its source of food is not on the highest micronutrient dense. So here you are eating, I'm pretend this is a cow. <laughs> this is a cow that has been injected with all kinds of stuff. It's then slaughtered in a slaughtering manner. I'm sorry, you guys are gonna hate me after this. It's been slaughtered in a slaughtering manner that it hears all the other cows in its line getting you know, screaming and whatnot. It's, it's um, uric acid goes into its muscles and we're now eating all this byproduct from this cow. So this cow now has tons of antibiotics. It has pesticides from its food sources. It wasn't given the best food. It was given stuff to make it grow faster. These cows and chickens, they grow up super fast. We don't want our kids and we wonder why our kids are super sized. You wonder why you might be supersized? Guess what? Some of it is because you're eating the muscle of animals that have growth hormones in them. You are now ingesting growth hormones. You're like, oh, ding, ding, ding. I got an aha moment today. If you just get that aha moment, think about that. If you're trying to lose weight and you're eating byproducts from an animal that was given a product to make it grow faster, hormones to make it grow faster, you are now taking in those hormones into your precious Ferrari. All right, so we talked about the proteins a little bit. This course has everything in here for you. I've outlined the highest fiber beans. I've outlined sources of your protein. And then I also gave you a chart so you can easily identify when you're going to the market what you want. So today we are going to be making either a pokey, a taco, or Mediterranean bowl. People who come to my home are mesmerized how fast I am in the kitchen. Um, probably because I'm not the best cook. No, no. <laughs> probably because I have a lot of stuff pre-prepped generally. Today, I did it pre-prep because I wanted to do it with you. I am going to make a poke bowl. I did actually pre-prep. I'm making my quinoa in here. In my quinoa, I put vegetable broth. So quinoa is a two to one. It's just like rice. It is considered a grain. Um, it's a high protein grain. It also has great fiber. So I absolutely love it. Uh, before we get into all the cooking, I wanna show you some other options that you guys can find in the stores when you're looking for your carbs or your, um, your grains. So this one is Miracle Noodle. I haven't tried it yet. This one is Kelp Noodle, and this is Miracle Rice. I have had Miracle Rice. I think it tastes okay. It smells stinky out of the package, which is a big turnoff for me, just be honest. Um, it's, it's an interesting product. These are made out of mushrooms. And if you've ever soaked a mushroom, you might understand why it has a little stinky to it. So when you tell yourself it smells like a mushroom, then it smells like a mushroom. Don't expect it to smell like nothing rice. All right, so those are two awesome options. Um, I love basmati and sushi rice. I did not prepare sushi rice today for my poke bowl. I am doing quinoa, but if I am going to do something with the family, I do the sushi rice and I make it in my rice cooker. If you don't have a rice cooker, I highly suggest you get one because you can be throwing in your quinoa or your rice or your grain in there. And then you have your air fryer going, you have your stove top going, your barbecue going, your oven going, and you are gonna be like, damn, 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 tons of food at the same time. This is how I prep 
and I do it in less than 45 minutes. All right, so I've got basmati rice. Basmati rice is a really great rice. It's got a little bit of a sweeter tone to it. Um, what do I want to say about basmati rice? It has a nice protein consistency. It's a four grams per cup. Um, it has nice fiber, but it's not your highest fiber. Your brown rice is about going to be the same as well as um, else. Um, then I wanted to talk about farro. Farro is a little bit nuttier. Farro is F-A-R-R-O. Love farro. So farro is six grams of protein and it is eight grams of fiber. This cat wants you to have more fiber. But here's the thing, don't go like batshit crazy with your fiber because your body will not appreciate it. No, neither will anybody else in your household, <laughs> including pets and, and cats. Okay, so, um, and, and it will hurt. You have to go gradual. The typical, okay, USDA, should we talk about USDA, what they recommend? They recommend 12 grams of fiber a day. I'm going to just go on saying that most of you are probably between six and 12. I'm between 35 to 45. <laughs> yes, you all know I'm a poopologist. Love, love making sure that my body is clean. Um, when you came from the, the track record of not being healthy, you want to make sure you're getting out the impurities, those toxins. If you touch your belly right now and you feel it distended and hard, it means you're full of crap. Just going to say it, full of crap. And I'm going to tell you 99.9% .9 of my clients are full of crap. I think that I'm not full of crap, but here's the deal. I'll go and get a colonic that is in a voluntary tube up your, your R set that uh, throws water that's not the right way to say it. It doesn't throw water. It press, it's pressurized with water and it um, goes into your colon and it kind of swirls it around and then they release the water and out comes stuff. <laughs> Number twos. And you can watch it go through the, the, the tube and I do because I want to see like what's not what's coming out. I'll usually go at like one between 11 and one o'clock because I've had my morning release and it mesmerizes me what is still in there. We all have like a C curve that is a little bit of a twist and it blocks it. So this helps to clean it out. Um, so I just want to say colonic, if you're in South Florida and you want a referral for a colonic gal, I have an amazing gal. She's I guess it's, I think it's considered Pompano. It's like North Fort Lauderdale on the ocean. Um, okay, so we have the Pharaoh. And then I also wanted to tell you another one. And this one, this one, you guys, is ridiculous. Um, it's not as high in fiber, but it's also eight grams and it's four grams of fiber. But Frika, if you guys can see that, Frika, F R E E K E H. It is made from wheat. Um, it is a great source of protein. Um, it's, this one is roasted green wheat. So it's been roasted. It has a, I don't want to say yes, it doesn't have a smoky flavor, but it has a, a roasted, like crunchy kind of a flavor. And this is really great to make, to put into soups or in your side. So um, there you go. And now one of my all time favorites, this is purple rice. This has eight grams of protein and uh, two grams of fiber, but it is loaded micronutrient dense. Let's see if we can. So this is an organic. I got this, I think, and this non-GMO, right? Remember, we want to say non-GMO. Here's what the non-GMO logo looks like, by the way. Sometimes it's just black. Sometimes it's all gold, um, but it will say non-GMO and um, they have to pay a lot of money for non-GMO. Some products may claim that they're non-GMO and they may very well not be non-GMO. Products also have to pay for the organic or safety symbols. So 
many times your local stuff is non-GMO'd, right? Your local market, uh, but they, they can't say it. They can't write it. So you can just ask them if they, if they started with their, with a pure seedling, you know, so if you go to a farmer's market or something and you're getting tomatoes or apples or squash or anything, you could just ask them if they're the original growers and did they, did they create it from the seedlings? All right. On to the show. So for my, for my meal, I found, I found sushi grade tuna. Now I haven't found it except for this one market in Boca Raton happens to be one of my clients. But if you don't have sushi grade tuna, the reason that it's sushi grade is because like minutes after it's caught, it's frozen. And so that kills the bacteria. Whole food, fresh market, um, many fish stores do not sell sushi grade. It's expensive because of that extra process that they have to do. They don't just throw the fish on the, on the boat and keep fishing all day long. They, they prepare it right away. So sushi grade is more expensive, but what you can do is when you do buy a tuna, if that's what you're buying or any type of fish salmon, if you like uh, sushi grated sushi type of uh, salmon is put it in the freezer for at least two hours that will kill the bacteria. Now, do I trust that? I don't. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you, if I buy something that is non-grade, then I sear it. I will marinate it and I will sear it. But if you're doing any kind of uh, raw fish, fresh fish, you definitely want to be careful about that. All right. So I am going to first prepare my tuna. Whoops. I guess I should use a big white bowl so you guys can see. So after I do that, I'm just gonna move it to this bowl. So I'm going to go ahead and cube up my tuna to prepare it. Can you guys all see that? Okay. Where's my TV monitors? All right, so I usually try to just make it into nice, even cubes. And if you are doing your chicken or you're doing anything else, you can go ahead and go ahead and prepare your protein now. And so I'm going to be looking for slices that are about that thick, about, about the width of your finger. looks good when your food is about all the same size, right? So I, I do take a moment and do that. Uh, you will see me going through some of my other vegetables and chopping pretty fast, but tuna, I don't want it to fall apart. I want it to stay strong and pretty. All right. And then you can just go ahead and make it into cubes. So by the time you're all said and done, you're looking at something like that. Some people like them bigger, some people like them smaller. Some people just want to put it in with, um, you know, strips of it. You do you, you do what feels good to you. This particular recipe does ask for it to be uh, cubed. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and move it over to its dish. And I do use soy. I eat soy products. Again, they usually are sprouted. They're usually non, not usually, they are non-GMO'd. Um, I'm very firm on that. But I do not use soy sauce. I don't use soy sauce. Just A, I haven't found one that is non-GMO and two, I prefer to use a coconut amino and now I'm having amino acids, which are very, very important to break down your protein and digest your protein. So you wanna make sure also that you have amino acids. If you do take supplements or you're about to start taking supplements, you definitely wanna make sure that you are getting your 19 essential branch chain amino acids. You'll see that marked as BCAA, 
branched chain amino acids. So I'm going to go ahead and douse my tuna and let it sit. And next you would be using onions or shallots or um, the green onions. I am going to be using a shallot for mine today. And the easiest way is to cut off your ends. And then you'll see the shallot, um, just like an onion, it is in the in that family. You just peel it back. Oops, I'm not peeling in the mirror in the lens. Sorry, guys. You just peel it back. And I'm just going to go ahead and take some of it off. And, and then slice it and dice it up. Sounds like the quinoa is ready. I think I have flying shallots. <laughs> All right. Does anybody have any questions so far? Hi, Becca, it's Patty. Um, where is that list? Is it one of the links in the first week of lessons? It is in the second week and it was also sent via text to everybody. Oh. And I did see your name on the text. It was sent text and I think you actually also got it in your email. So we're gonna go ahead and put the shallots on top of the fish. And next, we're going to go into um, talking more about um, once you get past your protein, we're looking at our carbs. So I already talked about the carbs. I gave you tons of choices for your carbs. But I want you, carb is also a starch, but I, I want you to think about your carbs also as your vegetables, right? So your vegetables are a carb. So we want to go more heavy in our vegetables than we do necessarily in anything else. So for mine, I decided to use some shredded carrots and I kind of cheated because I bought shredded carrots. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and take my shredded carrots and I'm going to shred them a little bit more. This is a good technique when you're trying to shred something. You kind of want to just leave the tip of the knife down and then turn it. And that's going to make it a lot easier and faster for you to get your little pieces. So I am a bowl girl. I love my clear bowls. I like serving it this way. When I do a meal like this, um, even for myself, I don't just like mix it all together. I like to like make it all pretty. So I put all of my preparations into a bowl. Next, we're gonna go into cucumber. I am gonna take off the skin of this cucumber. Um, it is an organic cucumber, but I'm not interested. It, it's, it tastes a little bit bitter. The skin, sometimes if your skins are bitter, just take them off so that you can get to the, the sweet part of your fruit. Definitely invest in a good, I guess they're called a potato shredder, right? De-skinner. Um, I've had this one for like 12 years. It's still as sharp as anything. Right. It's called a peeler. That's the Peeler. <laughs> That's it. it. Very simple. <laughs> <laughs> it 
It is called a peeler. Oh. After I said shredder, I thought peeler. I'm like, I'm just going to leave it as peeler. All right. So I, I like to make my surface easy. So I'll cut it in half and then I'll put the cut side down. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and make thin, whoops, thin little strips with my cucumber. Again, lots of different textures in your food. It just gives you more of a mouthgasm and gives you more opportunity to taste everything than everything being very big and, um, and chunky. So I'm going to go ahead and make these really small too. I'm going to show you guys something really fun at the end, which was not on this. Right. Next, we're going to get for me, I'm going to use some avocado. And sadly, the avocados that I saw in the store were not beautiful. This guy is hard still. He's not ready. I think if I was at Sharonata's house with her big tree, I would be happy-go-lucky right now. But I love avocado with this dish. We will not be having avocado with this dish today. <laughs> but you, to do an avocado, I just wanted to talk about the avocado and show you how to cut an avocado. So a lot of people eat the Haas avocados. The Haas avocados is shaped, I'm just going to say more like a mango. And inside of it, um, you'll see that there's like this, there's a pointier side that is attached to the tree and then the rounder side. To know that it is ripe, you're going to kind of just flick the very top off. And if it flicks off easily, your avocado is ripe, but you can also tell if an avocado is ripe by kind of touching it and squeezing it. If it's gentle, if it's firm, but gentle, if it's too mushy, <laughs> you don't want it unless you're making um, guacamole. But even though I, I would not buy one like that. Um, so you want one that is kind of firm and you can also tell by the color on the Haas avocados because the greener ones, A, they're harder and um, they're so super firm. The darker or blacker they get, the more ripe they are. So you can easily look to see and identify your riper avocados. And sometimes you won't see them with the, the stem area still on them. So if it's off of it, um, you'll just wanna kind of touch it. I'm going to go ahead and um, show you if this was um, an avocado, you're going to want to start from the top and go down the side and go all the way around it. And then you're going to kind of like wedge it open. And then when you get one side is going to have your pit, the other side is going to be without the pit. You're going to stab, <laughs> hit that pit uh, carefully, um, hit the pit with your knife, and then you can kind of wiggle it and wedge it out and then throw it out. Or be another Sharonata and grow your own tree. Her tree, this humongo tree was, was grown from a little pit. So we are going to do mango because mango with this dish is absolutely ridiculous. When I found the recipe, it didn't talk about mango, but I got to tell you also pineapple is really good with this. Um, absolutely love them both. Mango is the same thing. It is oblong. And you're going to start from the top. Let me see which one is riper. Honestly, these were the best that I could find. I would give this girl another, like I would not make this dish for another two days because my fruit and vegetables weren't ready. Just saying. All right, but we're here. We're going to go ahead and do it. This isn't so terrible. We're going to go to the top. We're gonna wiggle it around so we hit the pit. Now I know a lot of people like to go ahead and, and then we're gonna make a cross wedge around it. I know a lot of people like to just um, peel it right here. I don't. 
but you will, once you get it um, into a cross wedge, so I just did a cross on both sides, you can kind of get your finger in there. And pull it apart. From here, we're going to go underneath it. And this is good stuff. So while everybody is busy, we're going to eat that. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and dice up. Hi, Lisa. I'm going to go ahead and dice up our mango. Okay, fabulous. Now, some people might also like tomatoes or cabbage, arugula in with this. I was looking for cilantro and cilantro wasn't looking for me. I had a really hard time at the market trying to get everything for this. And you're gonna find that that's gonna happen with you too. So be prepared to make alternatives, right? You don't have to like just bail on a recipe because you don't have everything that you want. There's nothing like fresh cilantro, but when you can't have fresh cilantro, you should have these in your refrigerator or in your freezer. Um, this is cilantro. It's a paste, a paste cilantro. This is horrible lighting. <laughs> ah, is it better here? There we go. Can you guys see it? You're going to find this in the refrigerated section of your supermarket. I'm going to go ahead and put this on my tuna and I'm going to stir it up again. So while I am preparing all this, I like to just stir, stir, stir. So I'm going to put about a fingertip of cilantro on here and give these guys another little swirl. Mm, mm, mm. Who's coming for lunch today? All right. So basically we are, we are good and we are golden. Some people like tomatoes in with their, their um, fish. Some people like lettuce in with their fish. Um, I'm actually gonna show you a couple of fun ways to eat this aside from just making a bowl. So as we make a bowl, let me get my quinoa. So as we make a bowl, we're gonna get that beautiful quinoa. It's all kinds of colors. I'll make a very small plate here. Normally I would probably eat about three times that amount of quinoa because <laughs> I eat a lot. So there's my quinoa. And then we're gonna take some of our fish and put it on there. We'll throw our carrots, our cucumbers. and our mango. Now, normally I go ahead and I make the sriracha mayo, the spicy mayo, and I'll put it on here. But some people that will be eating here do not like it with the mayonnaise on it. So I did not prepare it with a mayonnaise. But I wanna show you a mayonnaise that I absolutely love. And this is mayonnaise, like I do not, <laughs> I do not buy like massive amounts of dairy, but this one is like, it's truffle spicy mayonnaise. And if I can tell you, you're going to have a mouth gasm because of this. I use very, very little. As a matter of fact, I will go ahead and show you. It does not take a lot. 
to give a lot of flavor. My meal is only going to have that much on it. I would say it is about not even a teaspoon, not even a teaspoon. Now, if you don't find that, I found, I think I found that actually at, um, it was either Whole Paycheck, AKA Whole Foods or Target. I find a lot of really interesting sauces, spices, and simple, easy things to prepare at Target. But if you don't have it, then you can grab your own sriracha. I thought I brought my mayonnaise out. I did. Mayonnaise, where are you hiding? Up oh, here it is. I like veganaise. And this one is follow your heart. So this is a non-dairy mayonnaise. And this is a coconut sriracha. And these together is going to make the same thing kind of as that. It's going to taste absolutely delicious, but it's really not exactly the same. I just can't tell you like truffle, truffle, right? Who, who's a cook in here? We know truff, truffle is truffle. Truffle is trouble. All right. So we got the vegan A's. Now you can use a truffle salt that will give you a little bit more of that flavor as well. You notice I didn't add any salts. Now for me, I have my bowl. My bowl is ready. What I'm going to do, what I feel like doing today, instead of just eating it as a bowl though, I went ahead and have romaine lettuce. I am going to mix that girl up in my bowl and then line my lettuce up. And this is going to be my serving utensil. <laughs> All right, so that's what I'm going to do. But another thing that you can do besides that, right? So you can either chop this up and put that in there. I like, I must've been a man in another life. You'll be like, yes, Beck, of course you were. Um, but I, I, like, I like to hold my food. Like some people like, like chicken wings or they like to hold their food. They prefer to a sandwich, right? I eat a lot of bowls, but today I was thinking, wouldn't it be pretty? And isn't that like prettier too? Like if you had friends coming over and you served it like this, but don't forget you put it all out and everybody gets to make their own, which is kind of fun. It's kind of social, right? Um, so there's that, but here's the other thing that I want to show you guys. Two other things for your, for your carbs or for your sandwiches. I absolutely love the habanero. They are wheat. Uh, um, wraps that are at Trader Joe's. I probably, they come in a package of 10. I know that because I eat 10 a week. Um, I love, I love my food. And so I'll make my eggs in there. Maybe I would put something like that in there. Um, I put my burgers in there. I do a lot of stuff in my wraps. I'll just slice up some vegetables and maybe put some dill um, vegan dressing on it. And off I go. Right? It doesn't have to take a long time, but I found these, these beef free sweet potato wraps. You can find these at Publix or most any stores. They have different varieties. I love these. I love putting them into the air fryer and kind of getting them all crunchy and toasty. So I'll put them in there, get them all crunchy and toasty and kind of fold them in half and make them into a taco. So you can use that. Your taco shells, for the most part, are also non-gluten. They're made from corn. So if you find them from corn, but here's a secret trick that I want to show you. With my poke bowls, this is absolutely amazing. These are rice paper wrappers. And this is not the healthiest thing, but it is absolutely friggin' rock star. Oh my gosh, I'm eating this tonight. You're going to take your pan. You're going to put um, your sesame seed oil in your pan. So it's not going to be like fried. But you're going to then cut these into quarters with your, with your um, kitchen scissor. So you're going to cut them into quarters. It's, the oil is going to be super hot. 
You're going to throw one piece on, like literally as it hits the oil, it's going to crisp up. You've had these kind of crispy cracker kind of things at fine restaurants. This is how they do it, you guys. So it's super, super hot oil. Throw it on, have your, your uh, tongs ready. As, pretty much as soon as it hits, like count to three, one, two, three, pull it up. You've got your plate with your... Um, paper towel, go ahead and put it on. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. I will eat about 12 of these. So that's three, three of three uh, rice papers. These have zero, this is like nothing. Rice for the most part is like nothing. There's no fat, there's no cholesterol, there's no protein, there's no fiber. Uh, each one of these has 11 grams of carbs but I want you guys to stop counting carbs. I want you to really focus in on fat, fiber, and protein. When you throw your carbs in there, like these kind of carbs, it doesn't matter. It's so insignificant. If you have a piece of bread, but you're having an egg and avocado and maybe chunked olives or, or tomatoes or whatever, you're eating nutritiously. Your body doesn't care that there's a piece of bread there. I know that some of you want to lose 15, 25, 50. Some of you, 125, 150 pounds. You're like, Becca, won't I lose it faster if I don't eat that piece of bread? No, <laughs> you're not gonna lose it faster if you don't eat that piece of bread. What you are gonna do is deprive yourself and you're gonna be eating not naturally. You're not gonna eat how you'd like to eat. I want you to eat how you like to eat, but I want you to go more into the protein, into the fat and into the fiber, and then add that bread, right? So we don't have a big ass hoagie <laughs> with a couple of strips of meat and some vegetables in there. We have a half a hoagie with a whole lot of protein and fiber and, and your healthy carbs, AKA your fruits and vegetables. I want to just share with you guys this little area over here. The other thing I wanted to talk about this week was getting 30 different fruits and vegetables into your body. And I asked a bunch of you and you all thought I was batshit crazy. You're like, I don't eat 30 different, like it will go bad in my house. It will not, it will not work. So I'm going to show you every now and then, yes, a girl goes bad. <laughs> she's getting, she's going to get cut in half and then thrown into the air fryer today because I didn't pay attention to her last week. She's gone bad, but there's, she's still some good, right? So I'm going to cut into it. She's getting in the air fryer with a little oil drizzled on her and uh, I, will, I will enjoy her. But I took a picture and I posted it on our private Facebook page. In there, I showed you, I hit 18 or 19 fruits and vegetables this week. And um, your lemon counts, your oranges count. So here is my little, this is my snack area, you guys. Can you see it? You wanna know what I eat for snacks? Here's my snacks. Oh, and last week I had um, those pretzels that are stuffed with peanut butter in them. <laughs> I did. I ate a bag of those in three days. So I have a food problem. Many of you may relate. I do. <laughs> so I didn't buy them this week. They won't, they'll, I will not buy that stuff this week. But last night I had me some healthy strawberries with chocolate on them from Trader Joe's. I had me a whole package of strawberries with chocolate from Trader Joe's. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Um, because that, I know how I eat. And if you eat that way too, then you don't buy five packages of it. Buy one. And then those pretzels that were like, should have lasted me, I guess, a week or two, maybe? I don't know. Should they last long? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the rule is. I don't, I don't really live by those rules. I, I will usually eat a package of popcorn or chips within um, 
three to five sittings. And if you notice the serving sizes, I think it says like there's 25 servings in there. It, I don't get 25 servings. So if that's you, don't put it in your house. And if that's you and you start to go batshit crazy on it, put it in the garbage. I don't want you to be deprived, like never buy it, but don't buy it every week. Don't buy a bunch of them. There is nothing in this house for me to have that's bad right now. I am so excited. I bought two kinds of peaches. I got bananas, I got plantain. I have a kiwi left from last week. I've got these, oh, these are big again. Remember when these, um, what are these called again? The, the peelable ones? Uh, anyway, they got so small. I'm like, they take too much effort to peel and not enough fruit. I'm not buying them. And they're like $8, $9, but they're big again. I will eat two or three of these at a time. I'm a two, three-er. That's how I work. Peaches, I will eat two or three at a time, right? Um, I got mangoes, I got pomegranates, green apples, red apples, tomatoes, uh, cucumbers, carrots, celery, lettuce, uh, sweet potatoes, lemons, limes, and there's, God knows, something else in there some different kind of lettuces. All right. So that's 19. My goal is 30. So I made a post for you guys. I took a picture so that you can see it. <clears throat> oh, I put dried blueberries in there. Does dried blueberries count? Why not? I'm going to put the dried blueberries in my homemade granola. This takes two seconds to make and two seconds to eat. I eat this like that too. All right. So, um, have fun with your food. I want you to be mindful about your water this week. So we're going to get more into mindful eating, intentional eating. This is intentional. This is buying things that are good for you. When you go to a restaurant, ask for your sauces on the side. Most restaurants have two to three servings per plate. And that's how they can charge 18 to $35 for their food. Well, some of them just charge that anyway, but they, they don't make money on a small portion. So they give you one and a half to two and a half times the food. Some of my clients, I highly recommend right off the bat, you order your food, you order your, your doggy bag. You ask them for your box, you separate it, you put it in the box, you're done. You eat what you're supposed to eat. Here's how you're supposed to eat. Make a fish y'all. This is your protein. This is your protein. When you put your hands together, this is your vegetables, AKA your healthy carbs. Now, if you wanna open them up, <laughs> that's totally cool. You can fill those up. When you cup your hand, and I mean cup it, not like kind of cup it, but really cup it, that's your fat. So those are your nuts. I'm gonna say nuts in general are around eight to 15 nuts. If you are one of my snackers on nuts, you are eating a lot more fat, great protein, great fat, but more than what your body wants. If you're having a hard time losing the extra weight, it could be the type of foods that you're snacking on. I highly suggest, and we're going to be talking about it this week, intermittent fasting. One, it's not calorie deprivation, but it's simpler. You're mostly focusing on two meals, not three or four. Um, and my middle of the day, I tend to have my protein shake. Now, if I wake up and I'm super hungry and it's not the 14 or 16 hours or 18 hours, I usually eat around in that zone. I don't go hungry. I don't make it so I feel dizzy. I don't make it so that I'm not feeling good. And I got to where I am slowly. I didn't go from eating breakfast to not eating breakfast. I went from eating breakfast to uh, instead of having it at 7, 7.30, maybe having it at like 9, 9.30. And then I went to 10. And then I went to 11. Now, typically I eat between 11.30 and 1.30, not a hard rule, 11.30 to 1.30. I finish eating uh, around 5.30 to eight o'clock. I am flexible. And if I'm going out to eat with people, 
um, I will have lunch as my smallest meal because I love food and I love to experience food with other people. So I don't go into deprivation or scarcity at a restaurant, but I don't go out and eat all the time. So if you go out to eat all the time, then you do need to take mindfulness because if you break the 80, 20 rule, you are not going to have success in constant, easy, easy weight release. And when I say weight release, I actually don't even want to say that. I want to say fat release because we're not looking to lose weight. We're looking to change our body composition. We want muscle sparing. Some of you don't want ripped up muscles. That's okay. But we don't want to um, lose weight. We want to spare the muscle. So when we think about sparing the muscle, we think about how we can drip off the weight. And you're going to find out a lot of things in this week's courses about ways and foods that will help you to sizzle your fat and keep you satiated longer. I want you to be really thoughtful about those snacks, y'all. If you're a snacker, don't be asking me what to snack on because my answer is food. And pretzels with peanut butter is not food. Do I do it? I do. Do I do it every week? I don't. <laughs> I probably won't buy them again for like another month or month and a half. I'll probably choose something else that's not that good of an idea next. <laughs> right? I kind of go around. Um, some people are surprised and I'm going to share another thing with you. I love Dairy Queen. I love Dairy Queen. I need to have Dairy Queen like every three to six weeks. I do. I don't like to do it by myself. So I, my kids are not here anymore. So I adopted one of my um, clients and good friends, kids, and I introduced them to Dairy Queen <laughs> and they go with me. And this last week I kept on asking her, can they go? Can they go? Can they go? Week after week after week, we were probably five, six, maybe eight, maybe seven weeks now. I finished the launch with you guys last week talking about eating healthy. I got in my little red be, uh, beetle and I went to Dairy Queen. <laughs> I just want you all to know that because I don't want you to judge yourself and I don't want you to think I'm this perfect. I am decidedly 80 to 90%. Sometimes I'm 90 to 100%. There are days, I have really good days. I have a lot of really good days. I'm, I won't lie. I have a lot of days that are friggin' spot on. If you don't have days that are good and you have repeatedly days that are not, then you are not at 80%. Okay. So I want you to think about and what you're going to eat. I want you to think about mindfully going to the supermarket and choosing 15 fruits or vegetables. Now you don't have to get as many peaches as I got, but as I told you, if I go to snack on a peach, I'm not eating one peach. I'm eating three peaches. All right. Um, I eat the skin as well. When you eat the skin of these types of things, you don't have to worry about the glycemic. You really don't. I am, or have been, I don't think I am anymore. Uh, borderline type two diabetes. You're like, what? You're so healthy. Part genetics, baby girls, part genetics. And so I, I definitely have the genetic pool. But as soon as I found out what was going on with me and why I was tired so much, I changed my stuff. You won't see me putting a lot of honey, agave, or sweeteners into my stuff. If it doesn't have a fiber or I'm not having a fiber with it, I won't be sweetening it. Exception coffee every now and then. Every now and then. There's exceptions. How about those exceptions? But watch that there are exceptions, y'all. Don't let them be the rule. All right, opening up for Q&A. Did you find any aha moments here today? I know I have some high level nutritionists on, this, on the team. I know that I have dietitians on the team. I know that I have functional doctors in here um, and I have doctors. So I'm not practicing to preach to that I am um, a licensed doctor, but as a holistic, functional-based 
plant-based flexitarian. I've tried a bunch of stuff. I have seen it with clients. I have, I've worked with over 10,000 people in my lifetime. This is my 39th year. Um, if you have questions, I'm happy to help you navigate through it. I'm also happy to introduce you to my functional doctors and nutritionists that can help you with that. Uh, last but not least, I do want to say this week, and I'm waiting for the AOK -okay with the exact schedule and time, I'm either going to have one or two functional uh, nutritionists come in. They are uh, formulators and they have put together formulations that um, some of them that I have used uh, for gut cleaning, for weight loss, for inhibition, but do not give you, um, they're not, appet they're appetite suppressants without speed or caffeine and things of that nature. So I do know that some of us want a little bit of a crutch I am going to be sharing with you some recommendations that will help you. I know some of you may need sleep, um, help with your sleep, um, other, other type of things. So if your histines, if your allergies are, are uh, wacky right now, please drop information on our Facebook page, or you can send it on our playground. Uh, you'll see an Ask Becca. Go ahead and send me questions there, and that will send me questions so that I can start talking about and sharing your answers on broadcasts on Wednesdays. All right, let's go into Q and A here. Becca, where is I, I looked through all my texts. I, I don't see the link to that protein chart. The protein chart is in with the the meal for today. It is also. It is also in week number two. Okay. When it's, I get to week number two, I can download it. Yeah. And, and you did get this. And it is in the, the um, Let's Cook recipes. It was put in here as well. Okay. Uh, also, um, what I liked hearing about is uh, I didn't know that on the coating on the fruit or the vegetables or whatever, that the number nine indicates that it's organic and the numbers four and eight, you know, I thought that was really interesting. Okay, good. Yeah. I mean, definitely, you know, when you go to produce departments, very often it will say organic or it will say, especially if you go to Whole Foods, it will say organic, it will say conventional. Conventional means that it's not organic and that um, it was, it was uh, most likely sprayed. Now, Conventional, as I shared also, if you go to a farmer's market or if it says local grown, oftentimes it's not sprayed. So you just have to ask. So this, uh, to, to have the seal of approval for organic, they have to pay a lot of money. So some companies just don't, haven't invested in that yet. Any other takeaways, questions? All right, Lisa, yes, come on out. I want to say that um, you definitely inspire me to be better. And I personally have been like kind of getting all weirded out about eggs lately. And I saw, I think it was on, you may have sent it or I may have seen it on Instagram, I'm not sure. It was just saying like eggs are bad for you. You know, canola oil is really bad. She's shaking her head no with the eggs. Right. So. Why so uh, go ahead and, and finish your, your statement so, and, and then, I'll, um, then we can all respond back. And it's funny because I have a girlfriend who's vegan, like totally vegan. And I said to her, I saw this product and I said, I'm going to try it. And she goes, ew, I don't like that. You know, like she doesn't eat eggs. She says she uses tofu, like a tofu scramble instead. And so I bought this. I just made it for the first time and I took a taste and you know what? I like it. I'm like, I'm a total freak. I like a lot of things. Like there's certain things that skeeve me out, like sardines, but um, anchovies. But other than that, I'm like, I don't know. I'm up for, I think this is kind of cool. Hopefully this is healthy because, and I just, it was $5. I only took a teeny little bit of it and it made a cute little, cute little omelet. Well, I, I, I think I've seen that. I think I've actually even tasted it, but I don't remember the ingredients. Do you mind sharing the ingredients with us? Sure. So let me just stir my vegetables. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. So 
Um, it says um, water, mung bean protein. Uh, oh, uh oh. It does say pressed canola oil, uh, dehydrated onions, something, some kind of gum, carrot extracts, natural flavors, turmeric, potassium citrate, salt, sugar, tapioca syrup. Uh, something you know we can't pronounce tetrasodium, bisophosphate, transglutaminase. Yeah. And then, yeah. That's so, weird. yeah. So let's talk about this. So the the um we'll go quick in the egg, and everybody has their own theory, and I'm not here to dispute that she says that they're good, and that other people say that they're not. Um. Do they feel good to you? Does what? your stomach hurt? Do you, get, do you get bloated or gassy or do you feel bad when you eat an egg? No. No? My body, my body changed lately. I don't, I'm trying to understand what's going on with me. It might be the wine. It could be my, it could be my liver. It could be my kidneys. I don't know. All I know is that I was feeling a little bloated and a little gassy recently. Um, I don't know. I'm always like, I always get scared. Like, Oh my God, what is it? What's wrong with me? So I'm just, I'm just trying. I I'm not even trying different things. I'm kind of just like dealing with it. I just, it's great. But, it's great to try different things. And I think that, um, our bodies like to try different things. And that's one of the reasons why I want you guys to try and experiment with like 30 different fruits and vegetables and, and mix up your micronutrients. Um, my thought, even when I was vegan, which I guess I wasn't vegan because I was eating eggs. Um, I've always had eggs as one of my mainstays of protein. I will say this about that product. Um, anything that has natural flavors or colors, I try to stay away of. That was one thing. Um, so I don't like when it says natural. Natural, let me tell you something. Natural could mean uh, human hair, just saying. Um, I know that sounds absolutely gross, but that is a natural flavor that is added in. Um, canola. You can read and hear a lot of people's different opinions on canola. I never found a plant that's called a canola plant, though. <laughs> so, right, there's not a canola plant. So it's a mix of oils. And to me, it's kind of like when they GMO fruits and vegetables. I do not personally, like, I think that there's a lot of other choices out there. You're going to get people who say that there's nothing wrong with canola. Um, if I can get something pure, I prefer it pure and I'm going to leave it right there. So with that being said, what would I use when they say use canola in a recipe? Well, canola is kind of a light oil. So I might use um, a grapeseed oil. Um, I might use a coconut oil. Um, it depends. And also when you get coconut oil, you don't want refined. You want to get, um, you want to get an unrefined organic coconut oil. But um, so I, I like walnut oil. I love almond oil, pistachio oil. Like you can experiment with all these oils. Publix has a, Greenwise has a, an array as well as Amazon. Um, and so play with your oils. If there's not a plant by the name of something, I'm probably not going to buy that oil. Does that make sense? So um, I tend to agree on, on that just because it's a mix. Now, when you talk about mixes of grapes in different kind of uh, Cabernets, that's another story. <laughs> mix up those grapes and have a glass or two. Um, that's the other thing, guys. If you like to drink, you know, be mindful about your drinking. If you're drinking um, two to four or five times a week, I can't out-train you. I, your fork and, and, and your 17-minute your, uh, workouts, they're not going to out-train you. However, if you can bring it down, and again, I'm not into deprivation, ask yourself, why are you drinking? Is it because you, you're stressed and you're drinking to release stress? Are you drinking because it's social and your husband or your mate or you're, you're out with girlfriends and 
that's the social kind of thing to do? Are you drinking because you really love the flavor and just like swirling it on your tongue, right? That's like breaking from lots of coffee to having teas. Ask yourself why you like to drink. And is there an alternative meditation, walking, um, sipping out of a wine glass, but putting more of a spritzer kind of a wine in there, making it with club sodas, or just going into more of a bubbly kind of water with some lime in a wine glass? Will that support you? Ask yourself if there's some alternatives. I'm going to go ahead and turn off this. I want to thank everybody who came here live, as well as those people who are watching it on demand. You guys are rock stars.